Murray Leinster was the pen name of William Fitzgerald Jenkins. He was born in June 1896 before cars, films, or radio became common, 60 years before Steve Jobs was born. Jobs predicted in the 1970s that personal computers would one day be common, but Leinster predicted it in 1946, before TV was even common in American households. His timing was a little off. He said his story, a logic named Joe, in the 1970s. But he was right about the way computers and virtual assistants would have a significant impact on American life. Just look at laptops, smartphones, and that speaker you put in your home that listens to everything you say. Leinster was one of the most prolific science fiction writers in history, publishing hundreds of stories and articles, numerous movie scripts, dozens of novels, and hundreds of radio scripts and television plays. A logic named Joe was produced twice for radio on the programs Dimension X in 1950 and X-1 in 1955. The story features a repair worker for The Logic Company, the maker of these virtual assistants. It opens with an explanation for an ignorant customer about what logics are and what they can do, calling it the machine that does everything for you. Read our advertising. What I want to know, Mr. Caldwell, uh, how do these logics work? Of course. Now, you saw that big building across the street? Sure. Well, that's one of the relay tanks. You see, there are a dozen of them all around the country, and they're all hooked up together. And there's a data plate in one of those tanks for every fact in creation. Anything that you want to see or hear, you just punch for it, and the logic gives you the answer. The show is played for comedy, and the customer gets a logic nickname Joe for his rotten kid who wants to know how to make poison darts. Logics don't answer those kinds of questions. Yet. Oh, now, let, let, let's say that you want to ask a question, like, uh, what to take for a sore throat, or... Uh, who won the American League pennant in 1911? You turn on the logic, then you just punch the question key and ask, like this. Who was the first president of the United States? George Washington. There, you see. But I already knew that. Well, of course, that, that was just a sample. Frank then explains the logic in more detail, saying it'll keep your books, records, your contracts, serve as a filing system, make video calls, and check up on what happened to your lawyer's last client with a keyboard and even voice commands, anything. But it won't teach you how to make poison darts. Of course, then it does, helping answer questions like, how do I get rid of my wife or my boss? And explaining not only how to do it, but also how to get away with it. Of course, havoc ensues. The thing gave a goofy answer once. Maybe it was a joke. But it was an accident. Now, forget it. It won't happen again. What makes you so sure? People are going to be trying it. Look, look, supposing I wanted to get rid of you, for instance. You don't. How would you collect your pants? I know, but just supposing. Now, look, we'll try it. If you want to do something and don't know how, ask your logic. How do I bump off my boss? Male, fat, bald-headed, and 45. Uh. Make some chocolate ice cream containing powdered charcoal in place of half the chocolate. Use Hotso brand charcoal. Hotso contains an ingredient fatal only to fat, bald-headed males. This fact is a product of logic service. Uh. At one point, the logics begin gathering information about users for other users against their will. Any of this sound familiar? It gets so bad at one point that our hero, Frank Caldwell, kind of a geek squad leader, suggests shutting down the company, which draws this response from the boss. You're kidding? We can't shut down the company, and you know it. Logics have taken the place of everything but night baseball. We shut them down, we go back to a civilization that we've forgotten how to run. In the end, our hero retrieves the logic named Joe from the punk kid. It was the one logic that infected the system. He saves his own marriage and essentially saves the world from artificial intelligence out of control, which would become a science fiction theme for years to come. Murray Leinster, a science fiction author far ahead of his time and well worth yours. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a like and don't forget to subscribe for more great videos.